if you don't own property in Sydney, you're never going to own property in Sydney. That's what the media tells us. Part of that's correct. The possibility of, of, of our younger generations uh, buying to the Sydney market is diminishing and I think it's going to be very difficult. Personally, my, my advice to people looking at getting in is to get in as soon as you possibly can. Um, and just remember, don't, don't be too picky. Fucking crazy, man. Oh, mate, I don't know how. I don't know I've how. I've got no idea. <laughs> I don't know how. I'd forget my kids' names if they any more. <laughs> already, than, when I already forget what yeah. year they're in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what classes they're in. Yeah. When, yeah, they, yeah. when they're, they're born. 100%. Yeah, when yeah. they're born. Yeah, what yeah. their birthdays are. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a big one. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, if I'm writing it down and, and yeah. the missus is next to me and I'm like, oh, and she's shit. looking at me like, he, he doesn't even know their birthdays. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And I'm gone. Yeah. But is it a dad thing? My dad yeah, never yeah. remembered my birthday. Is it a dad thing? So dads are just fucking But hopeless. do you then tell her, I know, I know the rental yield, the average yield of WA <laughs> sure, properties. Yeah, absolutely, you know, yeah. Do you, do you know how hard that is to remember? Absolutely, yeah. Hey? Exactly. Do you know Mate, the stats of the only yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Mate, I know the median house price for every state in Australia. <laughs> Wasn't it you saying that your wife's <laughs> friends at work ask her for mortgage advice because of you? Yeah, that, that's yeah. right. But yeah. she doesn't know anything. But she doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. So I need to like educate her yeah. so she can go business develop for me. Yeah, that's what you need. In the lunchroom. Perfect because business she, development. Mate, she's saying in the school's lunchroom, all the teachers, because they're all in their mid, late 20s, yeah. Yeah. all they talk about is home loans and housing, which makes sense because they're all getting at married. Lunchtime. Yeah, right? Are there brokers yeah, that right. specialize? Because teachers would be like a nice little niche. And there you are. can get little like... There are. Um, yeah, so some brokers will email Pound. all like the that? schools. Yep. And then say, hey, I've got a special offer just for teachers, you know, or market themselves that I'm a specialist mortgage broker for teachers, which we all know doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, and they get some traction and some of them get invited into uh, the weekly meetings to do a session. What, face like at, face. at the school? At the school. Because yeah, wow. the teachers all have a meeting every week. Yeah. Right. Well, and they meet all the time, apparently. 100%. <laughs> like, they're always having meetings. And then sometimes but, the union people go in yeah. or sometimes the salary packaging people go in. Yeah. yeah. So it's for the benefit of the employees. I've seen a lot of like, I've seen brokers yeah. that look after nurses and medical industry yeah, because yeah. they get their um, LMI waivers and stuff. Yeah. So that makes sense. I don't know if, te do teachers get, if they're- uh, Only with one bank. With one bank. Mutual, yeah. It? Yeah. It's actually uh, with bank first. So yeah. So it's funny. Teachers mutual bank doesn't actually do anything particularly special for teachers. teachers. They mutually do nothing. Um, yeah. Teachers. <laughs> but, but Bank Vic, which was the Victoria Teachers Mutual Bank, the Victorian one, completely separate. Um, actually waves LMI for teachers. I wonder if there's something in yeah. like buyers agents for teachers. Is there anything, is there anything that niched down? Possibly. Possibly. I can create something. I feel like you got yeah. something. But on you the know what, man? Yeah. Teachers are actually a great yeah. segment of the market yeah. because employment is very um, stable, yeah. mm. right? Decent money, yeah. right? Like not going to go into whether they're paid well or not, you know, because they do do a lot of work. But decent money, um, you know, usually good financial situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's definitely a market. Or same as nurses, nurses, teachers. Midwives, because they have their brackets, so they know like they're earning this much, Correct. and they've got capacity to earn this much if they go up a level exactly. or whatever. Exactly. So yeah. like that's actually it's quite easy, not easy, but it's quite easy. The understanding of what they need to yeah. borrow more is is that's there. That's right. That's um, right. My brother-in-law's a teacher, and he does like he's a music teacher, so he does side gigs as well. So he's like able to get cash on weekends when he does it well, like with his band and stuff oh yeah yeah so I think you know him I think you help them with a rings with a, a bell Ring. you know? <laughs> I won't say I won't say any names you know rhymes with Mickey <laughs> um, anyway uh, but mate Great to have the band back together. If we can have a little Wait, bit of a segue again. there, the man band, uh, eh? proper the man band. I don't know if we want <laughs> to call it. Oh yeah, man. ladies, look out for the dad squad. <laughs> <laughs> um, dad bod or dad squad? Dad what bod, you, the mate, dad bod squad. That's right. Dad bods are in. Maybe we should have. Uh, maybe that's what we should do. We'll start like a calendar, which is just of our dad. But no, no yeah. one's gonna. Dad bods it. Dad bods it. Dad, dad bods it. <laughs> uh, this you is would be Brad now. Pitt if dad bods are in. I don't. I'd be some. I'd be tall enough to reach Brad's pit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of I don't know I've got nothing I, I would is, be Ken John you'll be who <laughs> Ken John you know from uh, Hangover oh yeah, oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. is that a race racial stereotype no no no, no. okay nah, just, as long as you said it and we didn't that's just right yeah that's he's fine. a doctor so I'm aspiring to you be a doctor you are aspiring Ken John's an actual doctor 
Like he the is, actor's yeah. an Dr. actual Ken. doctor. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And his wife's last loved name is in, Ho. Loved him in Ken. I don't know yeah. if this is a stitch up or not. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, what, are, we actually, are we actually recording not, right now? It's not entrapment. We are recording. This is property now. I'm going to be your host, Michael Carbone. You guys can call me Carbs. Um, hey, Carbs. Jason, he's sexiest voice is back. Thank you very much. We were having a discussion the other day. Are you the sexiest voice in property podcasting in, in property or for property now. in general? In property podcast for now. Property podcast. Yeah, for Aspiring now. to be the property sexiest voice in property. Podcast in the Coposit podcast room sitting in, in Summer Hill chair. in New South don't Wales. Tell, <laughs> don't give away all of our details. <laughs> We've got a lot of stalkers. <laughs> like, just be very careful. <laughs> um, Alex Minter, Astute Property Network. An astute network of property buyers yeah. is how you described it. Oh, absolutely. It made yes. so much sense. I don't I know did. how I didn't figure it out myself the first time. But you're back. Um, first, The first guest to be back a second time because last episode about the Perth property market was so fucking good. It actually got into our top three yeah, right. um, of, of YouTube views of all time. I thought you invited me back because I stuffed it up. We wanted to start again. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Can we re-record that episode? Yeah. <laughs> but we're actually talking about, so we talked about Perth last time. Like I said, third highest viewed. We're, we're aiming for our highest viewed episode of all time now. So no pressure, Alex. We're talking about the Sydney property market. We think this can be one of our biggest episodes because everyone knows or everyone says Sydney property prices are screwed. If you don't own property in Sydney, you're never going to own property in Sydney. That's what the media tells us. Um, how do you see it? I think uh, part of that's correct. I think the um, the possibility of, of, of our younger generations uh, buying to the Sydney market is diminishing. And I think it's going to be very difficult for our children to step into that market you know, when they're ready. Uh, and that's where you know there's a lot of intergenerational wealth now that we see um, with parents helping with mortgages and, and deposits. And I mean, Jason, you probably do a bit of that yourself with um, with uh, guarantors. But um, absolutely, I, I certainly see um, challenges for the Sydney market and yeah, go, going forward. So let's unpack that a little bit. Who's buying Sydney right now? Mm. Hey, it's playing Sydney. Um, look, you've got a you've got a mixed bag. I mean, you've got people who grew up in Sydney who want to you know raise their families in Sydney, want to buy near mum and dad. Um, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have parents or family members to assist you in that space, uh, you know, there's a there's a massive market there for first home buyers. Um, obviously, certain areas. You know, people with higher borrowing capacities, higher price points, it, it is a higher entry point into the Sydney market. Um, you, we still see a comfortable spread of investment as well. Um, we still see a comfortable spread of investment from offshore. Uh, so it is a mixed bag. What's a, so what are you, based on what you're seeing out there at the moment, what's a good number? Like what's a good, how much is a good investment property in Sydney worth? Yeah, it's... <coughs> what should your budget be? Such a, a loaded question. And you can go deep in, in, into go this. Go deep, man. I can go time. deep. Go okay. deep. Go deep. Um, look, in regards to Sydney, when, when we get asked the question, is the time right to buy in Sydney? Yep. Again, it depends on individual circumstances, which most investment does. Yep. Right? Now, for us, it's about understanding, you know, when that time is right or when the Sydney market is due to perform at its best. And the way that you know we understand it, and I guess many economists are starting to break it down and understand it, is understanding that there is a cycle. Right? There's a land. So, I mean, you probably heard before, property is very cyclical. Yep. All right. Um, PJ, can you? Uh, I'll just do this for PJ just to. Oh, you came with notes. A, I, I had a few notes. I think it's I a, love good, this. a good. Um, See, this is the preparation level preparation. I need. Making, good, <laughs> making me look really bad. A good. <laughs> a good I thought with no. my voice is enough. <laughs> no, the voice is enough. But you, you can talk about cycles. You can talk about trends. But I think you know if you if you're able to see it and understand it, um, again it, it helps. But I don't know if PJ's got the the uh, thing working, but um, it'll pop up soon. Anyway, uh, I'll start to break down. So um, I guess the cycle that has been identified by, by a number of economists. One, you know, if people are interested in this uh, type of data and commentary, there's a, an economist by the name of Phil Anderson who yep. wrote the book, um, The Secrets of uh, Real Estate and Banking, right? Secret Life of Real Estate and Banking. So that delves into years and years and years, like 200 years worth of land data, yeah, right? right? And the long and short of it is, it's pretty much broken down to identify that there's about an, a cycle that runs over about 18.6 years. All right, so you know that's from recovery phase 
to the end of the cycle. Yeah, well. right? So the recovery phase lasts between six to seven years, which is when um, you know we see property incline through the recovery phase after every sort of big downturn. The uh, cycle then enters a mid-cycle correction yep. or a mid-cycle dip, which typically lasts between one to two years. Thanks, PJ. Um, we then enter a, uh, an explosive phase where the um, property does very, very well over a six to seven year period. And then we see the land cycles peak, right? And then after that peak, we do see the land cycles trend in a downward direction, which many would refer to as a recession phase or, you know, growth slowdown phase. Yeah, right? well, that looks a very, very dramatic. It, it is, on, and, on, and just to be clear as well, I mean, we are referring to trends here, yep. right? I mean, we all know property doesn't rise and fall in straight lines. Yep. So property will rise and fall through a recovery phase. It will rise and fall through a dip. It will rise and fall through the explosive phase. And it will rise and fall through the, 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 the downturn. So is know? this specifically just referring to land value or are we talking about houses are we talking about apartments we, or is it all mixed in the I, when i refer to to land values yeah. i'm referring to the market in general in general right? yeah, yeah right in case. If, en if anyone that's listening on apple or spotify or what have you i recommend you jump on our youtube page and have a look at the graph as well because we'll have that up um you can see some very sharp a very explosive period followed by a very broken period would you say that's like where are we at at the moment on, on this. Re really good question, yeah, right? So, thank you. And, and this comes down to <laughs> it, what the questions we get asked, you know, when when is the right time to buy in Sydney? And again, it's all circumstantial. So um, PJ, if I can just flick to the next one uh, that I have there, if it works. So this oh. is a graph that was released by CoreLogic uh, about five years ago or four years ago now in 2020. It's really sort of just breaking down uh, the land cycle, showing us the performance of the market through certain times, it goes back to 1985, yep. right? And if we go back to the previous cycle, right, that started after the early 90s recession, right? So we saw um, the, the uh, recovery phase, we saw the mid cycle dip, and we saw the explosive phase, which we saw the land cycles peak around 2004. We saw a, a big downturn, which really led into the GFC. Then we saw that recovery phase um, from about 2009, 2010 up to 2018. Or thereabouts we saw the mid-cycle dip and then we all know that in 2020 and 2021 we saw an explosive phase yep all right we so sure the, the, the question for many economists now is you know where, where are we currently sitting in this cycle and, and when are these land cycles due to peak right so that's just to give you a visual as to where we possibly sit today in the cycle so pj i just flick to the next one as well if we look at the data Okay, this will start to make sense soon, carbs, right? Yep. If we start to look at the data, and we're now measuring that uh, recovery phase in the previous cycle, right? So from about 1990 to about 1997. And you can see the value of Sydney was 184,000. And in 1997 to seven years time, it was 248. So that was a, a percentage growth of 38%. Right, now, why is this relevant? Is because historic... I guess historically and what data is showing us is particularly the Sydney and Melbourne markets, they typically perform better through the recovery phase of the cycle. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a very long winded answer, isn't it? Okay. It is long. Um, but again, I, but I, wanted interesting. To, I wanted to show you this. So we are, okay. So 2020, we are here. Where are we now? So, okay. You're saying we're in the. We're, uh, we uh, should uh, be. I might. I might just put a bit of clarity. In this. Yeah, we're yeah. not here in 2020. Yep. The reason I wanted to bring this slide yep. was we were having these conversations back in 2020. Got you right now. <laughs> our marketing has come a long way since this, yep. right? Yep. Um, but I did want to be authentic about this and explain that we were presenting this exact presentation okay. back in 2020 when people were asking where should we be investing should we be scared about what we're seeing as a as a globe around this you know virus and and you know the world shutting down right but we the way that we sort of got through that myth was understanding okay well we were due for that mid-cycle downturn which is what we saw going into to COVID, and then we were due for that explosive phase so just flick on to the next one for us pj so then if you look at the, the data of the previous explosive phase, right, you look at how Sydney and Melbourne performed compared to second tier cities, right? So the second tier cities like Brisbane, Perth and Adelaide, they shot the lights out through that period. Whereas Sydney and Melbourne only uh, produced a very small amount of growth. 
Okay, so what it's teaching us and showing us is that Sydney and Melbourne do perform better through the recovery phase and second tier cities typically perform better through the explosive phase. Now, PJ, if we just flick onto the next one. So you look at the, the data for Sydney and Melbourne through you know the end of the GFC up until 2019, both cities almost doubled in value. Wow. Okay, then you look at Sydney, sorry, you look at Brisbane, Perth and Adelaide, second tier cities, they didn't do that well. But then you now measure, so PJ, just one more. You now measure from 2021 to 2024. It's still following that trend. So you, the likes of Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth are doing far better in regards to percentage growth than what Sydney and Melbourne are. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't even know where to go from there. No, it's, yeah. Um, so according to this... I'm guessing your Melbourne, your Brisbane, oh, sorry, your, your Brisbane at Perth, Adelaide. It's why we're seeing particularly, we're seeing a lot of um, investment in Perth and Adelaide, I'm assuming. We are. Um, Melbourne's interesting. They've got a whole heap of uh, problems, laws and issues yeah. and problems that are probably hampering. But that opens success. the question, is that a counter-cyclical purchase now? Okay, yeah. All right. So, when, again, this is it's a very deep conversation, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. isn't it, right? I'm and happy to get as deep as we can <laughs> here because but looking at this, we're sort of saying that because at the moment, I think we're seeing slight growth in Sydney, just bringing it back to Sydney. Yeah. We're seeing slight growth we year are, on yeah. year in Sydney. So, yeah. you're three, you're four, you're five percent. And this is sort of indicating that as well. Um, we're, based on this, the assumption is that we'll continue to see some slight growth in Sydney for the next couple of years. Am I right in saying that might be the assumption? That, that's the assumption. I mean, I yeah. think Sydney's, I guess we've we, we got to look at Sydney as your, as your blue chip stock, yeah. right? I mean, it's your, it's your blue chip share. Yeah. Um, for the younger generational investors, it's your Bitcoin. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. like it's, your, um, it's a top tier market, yeah. right? But it's also one of the most volatile. Yeah. Um, and it also is pretty responsive to market conditions. So looking at your graph, we're saying explosive phase into 2026, which, you know, your Sydneys and your Melbournes will continue to just trickle along. What happens in a broken phase after that? If you're looking at the graph, there's like a three-year broken phase yeah. system. What happens to Sydney then, well, that's typically? Th that's typically when that, that market really feels the pain. Yep. All right. Now, the true value, I believe the true value of Sydney and Melbourne yep. is, is not at the peak of that e explosive phase. Yep. The true value of Sydney and Melbourne is, you know, if you look at where the, the broken system phase, you know, you look at 2029 there and you draw a line across and it meets it where we're, we're at the explosive phase, I believe that's the true value of Sydney and Melbourne. Okay. All right. Because you, you don't want to get into the, there's a like in any market, you don't want to get into the part where it's called the winner's curse, right? I mean, you're just trying to get into a market because it's a hot market or, you know, you, you, you really want to get into it and you're buying at the top of that cycle. Yeah. Because at some point, guys, we know the land cycle is going to peak. We yep. know we've seen that very aggressive growth over the last four years. We've seen that. But it has to peak at some point. Yep. Yep. And I guess this is why property is such a long-term game, right? You see really people, long, yeah. you know, if you're holding on to your property for decades, you probably don't need to worry too much about these cycles. You just know that if you hold on to it for 18.1 years, yeah. you're going to see some movement in that time, uh, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. There's, there's an old saying that like every seven years it doubles. And this is obviously not truly accurate, is it? The seven years no, thing when you look at it like this? Yeah, you've got to look at this as, I guess, general in a way where we are just talking about averages, right? I mean... Um, you know, that 18.6 year cycle could go for 17 years one year, could go for 19 the next. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So you just have to look at it as, as averages and, and general in that regard. Um, yep. But again, you know, when people ask us, you know, when is the right time to buy in Sydney? All circumstantial, all depends on your price point. But if we're looking at, you know, best performance time, it's through the recovery phase yep. and not in the this explosive phase. Now, for an investor, because you deal mainly with investors, obviously, so you're not speaking to a lot of first-home buyers, mm, I assume. No. But I've heard you say in the past that you'd probably recommend that every portfolio should have an element of Sydney mm, in it. Yeah. Yeah. If you can. Is that sort of, are you looking at Sydney typically first or do you look at Sydney later on in your investment journey? Again, like entry price point at the moment for Sydney and if we're talking standalone, yep. entry price point is, you know, eight plus, mm -hmm. right? Um, for, for many investors, that's, that could be a stretch, right? Yep. Um, it's not saying if you don't have eight plus, don't explore Sydney, 
then you've got to go and look at markets within markets and then, you know, where is the best place to invest in Sydney at the time. But if you've got 800,000, just as a, you know, a rough estimate here, I think you could put that into another market and do better. Yep. I think a lot of people are seeing like a million dollars being what you need for Sydney as well. And, and like, obviously there are apartments in certain areas that are going to be cheaper than that. Jace, what's the vibe on the street? Like people that you're speaking to mortgage wise that are trying to get into Sydney, is <clears> it out of reach? Is it something that they can do? Like, what are you hearing from your sort of Do you mean for investors or in, in oh, across general? Across the board, like mm. I, I would like to speak about your first home buyers trying to crack yeah. it as well, yeah. to be honest. So yeah. what's the vibe you're getting from your inquiries and the people that you're dealing with at Kalido? Yeah, sure. So mainly it's the borrowing capacity issue. Yeah. Yeah. So the government's really helped, especially first home buyers with a first home guarantee to solve the deposit problem. Yeah. So that's where you can buy with a 5% deposit. If you don't have parents as guarantors, the government will be your guarantor. And you can borrow up to 95% without paying any lenders mortgage insurance, right? So back in 20, what, 2022, 2021, um, that that scheme was on fire because the rates were so low, borrowing yeah. capacity was really high. Mm. So anyone who had decent income but didn't have enough deposit mm. was able to buy their first home. But now um, there's heaps of places available, like spots for that particular scheme, whereas a few years ago you couldn't get a spot and people were on waiting lists and stuff. Yeah. But now it's, it's like there's a surplus of spots because that just clearly shows – um, sol- solving that deposit issue is not helping people get into their first home. It is hard for first home buyers. Right, because there's no buying capacity. I read a news article last week. I forget the publication, so we can't plug it. But the article was about a young couple that bought their first home out in Western Sydney. And that was the article. That was the story. A young <laughs> yeah. couple buys first home in Sydney. <laughs> Congratulations. And I'm like, how is, how is that? New- is, that it, is it so bleak miracle. that that is newsworthy? Like, and they yeah. have been to auction after auction after mm. auction continuously outbid mm-hmm. and um and that's kind of what happened but it's really interesting to see I, I, it's the point of the podcast where i give coposit a shameless plug because this is probably now brought to you by coposit um there are opportunities out there i believe and there are ways to get into sydney and coposit i would say is one of those so having conversation with two siblings yesterday brother and sister uh, they purchased apartments through coposit in warunga um, which is obviously northern suburbs um, they're locals they wanted to stay in the area didn't know how the hell they were meant to buy property. And as is the case with a lot of first home buyer customers that purchase through Coposit, the parents see it advertised um, because ki- kids looking, well, I say kids, like early 20s, young young adults looking for property. Or they're not really looking for property because they don't think it's possible, but it's their parents that see the opportunity and go, hey, you know how I've been getting you to try and invest or buy something. How yeah. I tell you, you need to buy something. Yeah. Um, here's an opportunity. So I've had a brother and a sister purchase an apartment each. Yeah, um, right. They're able to stay in the North Shore when they're complete. Um, and it's an opportunity for them to get into Sydney, somewhere they can live in, stay close to family, et cetera, et cetera. So there are ways. Uh, there are ways and there are means. And I guess every everyone's going to be different as well. I guess if you're looking to invest, you're probably not going to have that much. So you're going to probably try and invest elsewhere. I think that's probably what yep. you're seeing, yep. um, Alex. But if you want to live in Sydney, you know, <laughs> probably a good idea to see what your capabilities are what your opportunities are and, and where yeah. you can do it it's certainly i you know i'm not one to say don't buy in sydney I mean, if you want to live here that's you know, one of the best cities in the world yeah i think it's a great city but from a pure investment point of view and if you're going into this or any buyers going into this as a pure numbers decision then i just think keep an open mind do you think um there's a lot of um discussion around the rental market at the moment in sydney yeah absolutely crazy um and what sort of pressure is that having on, you know, so I'll throw into the mix, I'm going to say some other buzzwords, housing supply. We're seeing a lot less properties built, a lot less apartments, house and land registrations in Sydney than expected. And this is probably across the across the board, to be honest, but we are talking about Sydney today. Um, are these types of things keeping prices high at the moment in this sort of explosive phase that that you're talking about is that keeping us there and could it keep us there for longer if these issues aren't addressed yeah i I believe it has uh recently i I was starting to see the i guess rental numbers starting to sort of slow down a bit i don't think the rental growth is going to be as aggressive as what it has been over the last sort of three years um but again that will deter that will be determined by you know the the approvals that that governments will allow developers to, to build and, and, <clears throat> and, I guess, population in, into the city. Mm. Um, but it absolutely, you know, puts constraints on housing, which typically does 
keep the upward pressure on property prices. So are there things we should be looking for? So I love a nice graph and we can see straight lines and things like that. But what are the real life things we should be looking for? So let's look at, let's not look at Sydney as a whole, but let's look at areas of Sydney. Let's say you want to buy a home to live in in Sydney or you, or, you, or Sydney is where you've decided to invest. What sort of things make a good for a good investment? Like what should you be looking for? What indications are there that there are going to be growth? Because every suburb is going to be different. Yeah. Streets in every suburb are going to be different. Yeah. What what would you be advising? You know, just general rule of thumb, you know, population, if you can see, you know, wh who's moving to the suburb, what's the infrastructure, what's the employment, um, you know, what, what are the social housing rates in the suburb as well? Um, and again, that, that, that does come into the people with a million or sub, sub million, yep. you know, they have to explore those areas that have historically may have held a bad name, right? Yep. But again, over time, they're, they're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to grow. Um, there's plenty of infrastructure. There's plenty of, you know, I guess government and private spending to those areas. You look at, you know, the likes of Southwest Sydney, um, Hoxton Park, yep. Campbelltown, those sort of areas, parts of the West as well. Um, again, historically, they've had not the greatest names, right? But um, but again, as an entry point, um, if you want to live there, fantastic. As an entry point, if you really want to invest in Sydney, then maybe they're the areas you've got to start exploring. We're seeing things like <coughs> Batteries Creek Airport. Mm -hmm. uh, there's all this infrastructure like the Sydney Metro and all that sort of thing. Are you looking for things like that along the way? Yeah, yeah. Is it hospitals? Yeah. Like, is it uh, like all, Ac all the access all to the, amenity? Yeah. yeah, yeah, all the usual things all that you sort of want to tick exactly off. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that you'd look in, in in a different market. If someone wants to get into Sydney but they can't right now, is that is it a is it sort of a bigger and longer term strategy that they need to put in place? Like, hey, let's start you know in country areas and let's build some equity and let's eventually get into a property in sydney is that something that you would talk to people about well, yeah we, we do see that and i think i mentioned on the last episode i was a part of um you know rent, rent vesting is a is a big thing now to help people one get into the market but then create the equity that they need to then leverage to, to possibly buy yep. in a market like Sydney. Reinvesting is one thing I say as well, move back home if you can. Yeah. There's no, yeah. no um, like live with mum and dad for a year, help them out a little bit. Drive a shit car. Drive a shitty car. Do what, yeah, do what you got to do. What else? Like get rid of your Uber, get rid of your... Don't eat avocado yeah. on taste. Don't eat avocado was, on taste. Smash Come on, we need a big like, <laughs> just something that's outrageous, you know, that's going to get some... No. Yeah. Um, don't it, subscribe to your OnlyFans. Don't rescribe... Don't you, get a haircut. Don't get yeah, haircuts. Yeah. Don't fix yeah. your teeth. Yeah. Don't see the doctor. Yeah. Haircuts every four weeks instead of every three. Yeah. No? yeah. Or maybe every four months four instead months. of every three weeks. If you come in with like a top knot or something. Yeah, yeah. Few months, well, well, that's what I'm why. working on. I'm saving we'll up for my deposit, You're as you can there. see. We're getting there. <laughs> There's some interesting things when you look at the data as well moving forward. I always, um, I always follow along, speaking of avocado on <clears> toast, <throat> Um, probably a good segue, but Bernard Salt and Simon Kirsten make us some great um, demographers out there. And they talk a lot about um, generational wealth and saying that the boomers, you know, they're going to be around for a few more decades. But once they are gone and they're leaving their money to um, to the next generations, that that's when, you know, your, your, your millennials are going to be able to actually get into property in places like Sydney. And if you actually follow out your, if you continue your graph that we have on screen mm. to, you know, the end of the broken system, mm. the recovery phase, the mid cycle, that sort of times with the next explosive phase, <laughs> does, <laughs> funnily enough. Yeah, yeah it does. And, and, and that's the whole thing, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, again, many people will look at this and I know there's, there's people out there who don't really believe in a cycle. Yep. But, again, if you look at this data, you can go back and analyze 200 years of this and it's done it 11 times yeah right so again I, th I just think it can teach us a lot going forward a lot of the clickbaity headlines which to your point that i've been that i've seen a lot this week alone i saw it on like equity mates i saw it on i think it was a current affair um was um that prices are going to halve mm. in oh. the next few years and it's this big clickbait headline it's like hey find out how property prices in Sydney are going to halve in the next two years yeah. mate that bloke goes on these shows like every couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Man, <laughs> whoever's been listening to that person. But to the point, right, <laughs> I'm not saying he's going to ever be right. And I don't think I agree with this, right, what you're showing us. I do agree, Alex. But it's okay if you don't. You a, can... <laughs> a clock is right twice a day. Yeah. People have been saying that, oh, no, the bubble's going to burst. Yeah. 
every every year someone's saying the bubble's going to burst. It hasn't quite burst yet, so to speak. We see ups and downs, but there hasn't been a dramatic decline like yeah, the we saw in the states. Crashed. You know, yeah. what was the movie? The um, uh, the big short. The big short. Yeah. Like we haven't seen a big short yeah. scenario yeah. in Australia, but yeah. people refer to that and say, "Look, it has to happen eventually." Mm. Can it happen? Uh, are those? Is the clock going to be right at some stage? I think I think it just depends on on what it is. Like I, I think another black swan event um, is something that can you know determine how far the market is going to fall. Yeah, right? but black, and, like COVID, black swan event. And yeah, we, we saw a massive increase, like twenty five. Yeah. And, and the like, reason the reason I would I'm using black swan is yeah. just referring back to the cycle, right? If we look at the fundamentals that are in place at the moment. There's a massive housing supply shortage, both from a rental and, and purchasing point of view, right? Yep. The doors are open, people are coming into the country, right? Now, the fundamentals for property, it's a perfect storm. So there's nothing suggesting in the next, in a, the undersupply of housing, I think 2028 is, or 2027, 2028 is when we're supposed to catch up with supply. Yep. Right? So everything is suggesting that the next four to five years, it's going to be great for property. But you know, what, what, what's on the horizon? There's nothing showing on the horizon that says, hey, you've got to really pull the handbrake now because we're going to enter a recession or we're going to enter. Uh, and that's why I'm just referring to something's going to rear its head at some point yep. to, to peak the cycle. Yep. Right? And I don't know what that is. Yep. I don't think many economists... No crystal know, ball? Well, there's, yep. I don't know. And you, and you, you know, going back to... <laughs> You're saving a lot on haircuts. Um, <laughs> I felt attacked in that conversation before. <laughs> it's like, I can't speak to this point. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's anyway. Um, amazing. I think, like, I guess, so What what is the, I guess, final message for Sydney? Like, very quick point. Um, are, you, are we looking at it now? Are we waiting? Are we holding? Are we... Bo- like, what's the, the quick... And I'll ask you as well, Jace. What's your final takeaway on the Sydney property market right now? Uh, for, for me personally, my, my advice to people looking at getting in is to get in as soon as you possibly can. Um, and just remember, don't don't be too picky. It's, it's not your dream home, especially being your first property. We see um, our clients upgrading all the time. Yep. They've bought their property. Um, it's not ideal. You know, it could be a smaller property just for the two of them uh, as a couple, for example. Um, and five, seven years later, riding the wave of, of the property cycle, have now sold it, paid down the debt, got a big deposit that's enabled them to upgrade to the house that they want or whatever that is. So on that, if you're getting in now, is chipping down, chipping away at the mortgage because we're not seeing as much explosiveness for the next few years maybe, yep. is chipping away at the mortgage sort of something that you should be focusing on? Oh, look, absolutely. Because yeah. um, when you're looking at the mortgage repayments, you, you can't compare your principal and interest repayments to the rent you pay. Yeah. You can only look at the interest you're paying, yep. compare that to the rent. Because the principal is actually really your savings in your equity that you're owning part of the property yep. uh, more and more. Um, so I think, you know, yes, there are budget constraints with borrowing capacity, um, challenges with deposit. So that's why I think you need to compromise. Um, look at properties, perhaps they didn't have a really good reputation previously. Um, look at the, p- the potential for capital growth and not look at it purely on an emotional uh, and a lifestyle factor. You know, yes, those are important, but you're not going to live here for the next 40 years. So get a balance of both so that when you do sell it, you're going to have a much better uplift versus a property that met all your lifestyle needs. Um, but does not have as much profit when you do sell it to upgrade to a better place. Is there a time where people should be cashing out of Sydney? Or that's a crystal ball, you know. Yeah, like, I, know, man. Um, I, lo- you, I love <laughs> this. <new tricky> question. <laughs> oh, it's um, yeah. Look again, if you can try and pick the peak with anything, that's the. Has anyone ever been able to do it but successfully over and over don't. again? <laughs> They would have done it accidentally, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. they would tell you that they knew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah there's there's no, there's honestly, there's no, like I, I, I own property in Sydney, right? But yeah. for me, I'm not going to try and cash into the peak. Like yeah. it's for me, it's just a long-term play. Yeah. Great. That's a great, that's a great place to end, I think. Long-term play. Sydney's important. Um, great to have you back. I think this is going to be definitely top three most watched most listened to episode. Um, we're going to get you back again soon because I want to dig deep into, I had a Q&A with Jason about 
um, mortgages and mortgage uh, like mortgage brokers a couple of weeks ago, which was a fascinating convo. So I want to go one on one. I want to find out all about buyers agents and what people should look for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we'll do that soon. We'll get you back and maybe we can get three episodes with you in our top three. Possibly. Let's see how we go. <laughs> thanks, ha- thanks, for thanks for coming back. Guys. Thanks, Cubs. Thank Cheers. Cheers. The Property Now podcast offers opinions on Australian property news for informational and entertainment purposes only, and they are general in nature. It does not take into account your objectives, financial situation, or needs. It does not constitute professional advice. Always seek expert guidance before making any property-related decisions.